Hey everyone, this is Mason Hutchison, and you're listening to Herb Rally, your daily herbal podcast. We come out with new episodes each and every day, so be sure to tune in often. We publish herbalism lectures, interviews, narrated monographs, etc. Whether you're a new herbalist or you've been doing this for a while, feel free to peruse our archive of hundreds of episodes, and you're bound to find something of interest. Our goal for the show is to help you grow as an herbalist no matter what stage you're at. And today's episode is a little peripheral to herbalism. This is um, uh, dumpster diving with our good friend Giuseppe Spatifora. This is audio taken from our course called The Art of Frugal Nutrition. And The Art of Frugal Nutrition basically is a course that teaches you how to eat healthy on a budget. We started this course last December and we're up to four modules. We've got Ferment Your Food, a frugal kitchen staple with Kirsten Shockey, Dumpster Diving, The Ultimate Guide with Giuseppe Spatafora, that's today's show, Bone Broth, An Ancient Healing Tradition with Jade Alessandro Mace, and The Spice Apothecary with Bevan Clare. And each of these modules have multiple lessons. They range anywhere from 30 minutes to 90 minutes. Uh, and our plan is just to keep expanding the course over the course of time. So uh, we have a one coming up with Shana Lipner Grover called Eat Your Weeds. And that's going to be, a, I believe there's going to be four lessons in that module. And then a few months after that, I'm going to, I'll actually be teaching a module on making nourishing herbal infusions, which is a super frugal way to get a ton of minerals and nutrition into your diet. So I just wanted to share a little bit of audio from part of Giuseppe's lessons today. Uh, this is not by any means the whole thing. So if you want to check out The Art of Frugal Nutrition, just go to herbrelly.com slash frugal nutrition. And you'll see that it's a sliding scale course. Uh, it starts at $100, but it actually slides all the way down to free. So if you wanted to take this course, you could absolutely take it for free. Uh, just go to herbrelly.com slash frugal nutrition to learn more about the course and to register. And just to give you a brief update of what Oman and I are up to, uh, we just left the RV park here in Algoma. We're going to stay at her mom's house for a little bit until we uh, move to our new home in Appleton, Wisconsin. Uh, and that's just about two weeks away now, so we're super stoked about that. Other than that, we just recorded a bunch of content with Kyle Denton and his wife Nina in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. They own Tippecanoe Herbs, which is an herb shop, as well as a school. They host herb walks. So if you're remotely in the Wisconsin area, I would definitely recommend going to Milwaukee and checking out Tippecanoe Herbs. And stay tuned for some new YouTube content with Kyle and Nina. And there's even a guest appearance by their cute little baby, Davide. Uh, and we also have a bunch of classes coming out with Kyle in our uh, member area called the Herb Rally Schoolhouse. He teaches a class on rolling incense as well as making oxymels. So, oh, and a, and a bunch of plant walk videos as well. So if you want to learn more about the Herb Rally Schoolhouse, just go to herbrally.com slash schoolhouse. And once again, that's our member area. It's only $10 a month and release, we release new and exclusive content to our members each week. So that's going to do it for me today. Thanks so much for listening and enjoy today's episode with Giuseppe Spatafora, The Dangers and Legalities of Dumpster Diving. Okay, talk to you later. Bye. A little bit of housekeeping before we get into the show. The content in this podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only. It is not intended to cure, diagnose, treat, or prevent any disease. This information has not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. We are not doctors, nor do we play one on the internet. Please seek advice from a qualified healthcare professional. Okay, MC Calico, take it away. Yeah. Smoking herbal blends. We need some mullin and some kush, my brethren. While listening to Herb Rally Podcast again. Herbalism at its finest with Mason Hutchinson. Yeah. So... Uh, some of the important things to talk about with dumpster diving is also the dangers and legalities of dumpster diving. A lot of people ask me about those things. Um, I, just as a preface, I have dumpster dove in thousands of dumpsters across this country. I have never gotten sick from dumpster food and I have never been arrested or ticketed. I have been stopped by security guards and cops and store workers, etc. but in general, um, but again, I am a white middle-class male and uh, my experience may differ from yours. Um, in terms of legalities, 
the Supreme Court has said that anything that enters a dumpster is basically public domain. It's not, there's no um, expectation of privacy and um, can't really expect those things to not end up in the hands of other people. Um, so the real question with legality more surrounds, you know, maybe trespassing. And trespassing is probably the worst, a trespassing ticket is probably the worst thing that you would get. And it, might be a fine of $200 or something like that. I've never gotten a trespassing ticket for dumpster diving. There is a dumpster divers legal defense fund started by Rob Greenfield, where essentially they or he will pay for any fines that you get if you know, you're acting reasonable and not doing anything stupid. Um, but the whole idea is to encourage people to dumpster dive and release people from the fear that a fine or ticket is gonna happen. I think that the probability is extremely low that you will get a fine or ticket or arrested. I have talked to dozens of cops, security guards, and I've never really had that much of a problem. Uh, I'll give you a story. I was dumpster diving with a friend in Austin, Texas at a natural food store and a security guard rolled up in a truck and he asked what we were doing and we told him we were recycling food. He just kind of rolled his eyes and grumbled and was like, you guys really can't be doing this. You know, I can't let you do this. So I said, well, we're, we'll be really clean. We'll, you know, leave it better than we found it. You know, no one will even know we've been here. And he kind of rolled his eyes and he said, okay, you guys are not allowed to be here. You can't be doing this. I'm gonna come back in 45 minutes and you better be gone or I'm gonna call the police. So there's a lot of people, security guards, police officers, grocery store workers, random passers-by who all you have to say to them is, I'm just looking for some food. And most of the time people, the worst that someone's gonna do is say, you can't do that here. Get out of here, scram. Um, and that's really what I've experienced in general is people are pretty sympathetic to dumpster diving for food. Um, but again, I also go at night and I don't, in general, and I don't put myself in the position to talk to lots of other people. I had another time where I was with some friends and there was a, there's a sushi dumpster in a Northern Californian town and they make all the prepackaged sushi in the little bins for it to bring into grocery stores. And every couple of days they throw out all the expired sushi. And I go there right after they close when everyone leaves and you open the dumpster and there's stacks and stacks of all these sushi rolls that have expired that day and they're still cold from the fridge. It's a great resource. Uh, and there's a bar next door and someone from the bar saw us and said, hey, you can't be doing that. That's illegal. And I said, illegal, why is it, why is it illegal? And they're like, I don't know, privacy laws or something? I said, well, we're actually looking for food. This, is, uh, this dumpster has food in it often. And they were kind of like, oh, oh, okay. And just kind of left it at that because, you know, I think that people get more scared that someone's doing something nefarious, like actually nefarious. And dumpster diving for food to most people is not necessarily nefarious activity. It's not like you're seeking out doing something wrong to harm someone, and in fact, you're kind of doing the opposite. So if you do get hassled by the cops or a store worker or anyone like that, it's not time to have a moral debate. It's not time to convince them that what you're doing is right. It's just a Hey, I'm really sorry. I will be on my way. I was just looking for food. And generally that's good enough. And most people are, that's fine. And your interaction is over, you walk away. Your ID might get run if a cop asks for your ID. So hopefully you don't have any warrants. One of the big dangers we've kind of talked about a little bit is food safety. Um, you really just gotta use care when, when dumpster diving. Utilize the methods I've talked about. 
your sight, smell, touch, taste, etc., to determine if food is still good. Um, determine why something's in the dumpster. Again, go through all of these things and make sure for greatest food safety, it's knowing why something's in the trash. Um, the big, one of the bigger food safety issues is that there are some stores that will dump bleach or other chemicals in their dumpster in order to deter dumpster divers. And there are people that have gotten sick from eating food from tainted dumpsters like that. Generally, you'll probably be able to smell or see something like that. Um, but it's a cruel way to keep hungry people from eating food. One of the safety things we have to talk about is, um, well, just, you know, don't do anything that you don't feel comfortable with. Don't jump a fence if you're not comfortable with that. Don't climb in and out of a dumpster if you don't feel comfortable with that. But most importantly, and I found this one out, maybe not the hardest way, but the hard way, don't hide in a dumpster. If an employee comes out or a car comes by, um, and or especially if someone's approaching a dumpster, don't hide in there. I was in a dumpster once, in a pretty large dumpster, and I thought all the employees were gone from the store, and it turns out they weren't, and their roommates were coming to pick them up, and they were throwing in this big metal shade structure, and I was hiding behind a bag in a dumpster, and I didn't know what they were doing, I couldn't see them, and they came to the dumpster, and they threw this big metal structure into the dumpster this far from hitting me, like, in the back, and it made this loud boom. Scared me half to death. And if that had hit my head or broken part of my body and I couldn't get out of that dumpster or something, I was hidden behind a trash bag, I would potentially have ended up in a landfill, in a dump truck and in a landfill. So don't hide in a dumpster. If someone's coming to a dumpster and you're in it, make yourself known. It's much better to be alive and have a trespassing ticket than to be dead in a landfill. There are dark sides of everything and dumpster diving is not, uh, you know, it's not exempt from that. Um, so be safe, use discretion, um, yeah, and get out there and do it.